Welcome back. Captain Dan Cullen here, Elevate Yacht Management. I am down in Seneca, Illinois with Springbrook Marina. We are here, I came down to check on a couple client vessels, make sure their boats got properly stored away for the winter. Uh, all their lines and fenders and everything tucked away and boat looks nice and clean for, uh, for winter storage. Uh, I was planning to do a little video for you guys, kind of show you a, a basic overview of start to finish of winterization. But luckily enough, you guys are in for a treat today. I was able to uh, talk with the marina owner, marina management and the uh, service management. They are gonna let me kind of be a fly on the wall, walk through the whole entire process of their winterization from start to finish, what they do um, in order to, to get their boats ready, get it, it gets delivered here. How do they get the boat ready from taking it out of one of the slips like behind me here? to taking it to their bay to get pulled out of the water. It's doing that over here right now. There's one of those boats getting pulled out. All of this. So you guys are gonna see kind of behind the scenes everything that a marina should do uh, to get your boat properly prepared for winter storage. Obviously us here in the Midwest, we unfortunately have to put our boats away, let them hibernate for six months or so uh, until we can get back to a, a good quality weather to, to do boating again. So. Follow along, I think you're gonna learn some great tips. We're actually gonna get some input from the service manager. This guy's been in the business for 30 plus, 36 years. They know what they need to do. That can give you some insiders, some pointers uh, about what the process is, how long does it take, when your boat is in storage, what's uh, what's happening to it, You know what has been done while it's, uh, while it's hibernating, plus when it's ready to come back in the water, everyone in the spring assumes, hey, my boat's ready to go. Can it, uh, can it get launched tomorrow? There's some processes that need to be done here, some steps that need to do. So um, anyways, some good insights, some good background. I thought this would be a fun little video. So hope you enjoy, follow along, shoot some stuff in the comments if you have any questions about what else uh, maybe I didn't cover or they didn't cover, and then I can follow back and let you guys know more. Welcome back to the channel. Cheers, see you soon. Right, we're gonna be bouncing around today so we don't get in the way of their uh, maintenance and their process, because I don't want to, uh, listen, I'm, I'm blessed enough that they've been uh, helping us out and letting me get some video here so uh, what I'm going to show you is this boat right here is getting ready to go into the pit behind us to get lifted out so while that boat is getting bottom washed and getting uh, ready to then be taken to uh, the storage building the next boat in line is already here waiting it's on it's sitting waiting in the meantime what they've done is they've drained all the water out of the water tank any of the water holding tank you want that completely empty. Additionally, you want the waste holding tank completely empty. So they're gonna drain the waste holding tank. Sorry, it's loud with the power washing and everything else going on. So while the one vessel is being power washed and prepped for going into the storage, the next boat here is being taken care of. Drain all the water out of the holding tank, drain all the waste out of the holding tank. So it is empty and we don't have to worry about any of that while it's sitting in winter storage. So now, when the power lift behind me there is ready, this boat here will get taken to the bay, to the lift bay, and get carried out. So I'll show you all that process as we go, but again, I'm bouncing from boat to boat in order to uh, show you the process from start to finish, uh, and we'll go from there. As you can see, I show you, they're doing the power washing now. So as we're so after these boats have sat all summer long in the water for six plus months, they get pretty funky underneath here. So these guys, uh, kudos to them for the hard work that they do. It's fall, it's cold weather. Uh, some days it's even snowing out here and these guys are out here power washing the, the bottoms of these boats as perfect as they can. So it's a good time. They spend a very good amount of time here power washing every ounce of this uh, underbelly of this boat. Um, we're going to make sure we get all the algae off. It's obviously caked on um, some of these boats. If they're not getting bottom scrubbed or cleaned throughout the season, they're uh, getting a pretty good amount of algae in here. So getting it scrubbed up, getting it uh, sprayed off. Um, some of the main parts to focus on, um, other than just the entire area, is here on the drive. Uh, they want to make sure this entire drive system um, is sprayed off. Um, and you'll notice actually this boat had a couple uh, damage issues. So you'll notice one of the props, uh, there's actually only one prop instead of two counter rotating props on the starboard side there. So um, that will of course be addressed throughout the uh, season. And of course there's uh, throughout the winter storage that is. So you'll see when we're looking in here how tough it is, you'll see some of this clearer spot that looks like he's actually already sprayed it and the rest of it. I mean, you can't even really just easily wipe it with your hands. So that's why they really do need to come in with the power washer and really get at it. Uh, so again, all this drive area, uh, you need to make sure that that gets uh, cleared of algae. And then also uh, this back hydraulic area for your swim platform. These are areas that you don't want uh, build up to sit and get kind of caked on. 
the hardening of this buildup could cause issues in the deploying of your swim platform later on. So that's definitely a reason to uh, make sure they focus on getting all that cleared off and ready for storage. It's a good time. Also, they spend time uh, inspecting the bottom of this vessel. Uh, are all these vessels uh, identifying items like, for example, these missing props or whatever else might be, uh, you know, hull damage or anything else that might need to be addressed, something that the uh, owners might not even realize before the boat has been uh, removed from the water. So here we are at the service dock. So we've got a boat in the water, Prestige 5, 450 there. We've got a galleon uh, here. Both are in the at, at the service dock, ready to be uh, taken care of for their uh, fall services, which will include the oil change. They'll uh, not only change the oil, which should be done in the fall rather than uh, the spring. You should be doing your oil changes every year, about every 100 hours or every year um, in our area when we're putting our boats in the water for the winter. Now's the time to do it. So what you'll do is they'll run the engines for about 30 minutes or so, get them warmed up to suspend any of the, uh, the water in the oil, any contaminants, any of that stuff will get suspended throughout the oil. Uh, and then what they can do is then they'll do the full on oil change. Uh, addition to the oil change, they suggest doing the drive lube changes as well. Um, and uh, there's a lot of gears, a lot of things moving in, in these pod drives like this vessel, uh, or even stern drives, out drives, whatever you might have, uh, suggest doing the drive lube every year as well. Transmission fluid you can probably do every other year if needed, but uh, that's a lot cleaner. There's not as many moving parts, uh, but still uh, what they'll do is so they've got it already set up uh, in there, all the filters, all the, uh, they'll actually change the impellers too. Get it all done in the fall before the boat goes into hibernation for the winter, then you're ready to rock and roll right away in the spring. It doesn't hold you up for any more services to be done. In the spring, everyone's wanting to get their boats in the water. Everyone's wanting to get back. They're itching after this long winter for us uh, to get back in the water. So get this done now and they're doing it ahead of time. Preventative, we talk about preventative, preventative maintenance a lot. I think it's a great idea, great way to do it. So really cool to see the background of what they're doing and when they're doing it, their steps of the process. So um, oil change, drive lube, transmission fluid change, all that, the filters, the Raycor filters, the secondary and primary water uh, separating filters as well. So all that's done, then it goes, water's pumped out, waste is pumped out, lifted out of the water. We're gonna go show you that right now, and then we'll get to showing you how it gets put into the building in an incredibly tight space. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this whole system here, the travel lift and the, the pit. So the travel lift has up to a 100,000 pound capacity, uh, this specific lift. Uh, and this pit, this bay that they, uh, these boats will be pulling into is 18 foot wide and they can haul about a 60, 65 foot vessel out of here uh, in this specific, this particular lift. Um, so I got some extra views here so we can kind of see how tight uh, these boats are about 16 and a half, 16 foot wide here. So uh, you can see it's a pretty tight little spot uh, for them to pull in. Today was a pretty calm day, uh, slight breeze, but this is on along the Illinois River and uh, water is drifting down river so the boat's going to be moving down river along with the need for uh, any wind corrections or anything else so uh, definitely takes some skills here these guys are uh, obviously professionals and know what they're doing so really cool to watch i think it's also pretty neat to watch these uh, this orange tractor here on the bottom right they're non-stop there's boats moving in and out at all times uh, small boats, pontoon boats, uh, ski boats, whatever else is there. So uh, pretty neat to see. Again, this is a, a constantly moving um, atmosphere and pretty neat to be uh, flying the wall to watch this happen. Once the boat makes its way enough into the bay, they're going to start lifting up on these straps just to kind of uh, suspend the boat a tiny bit, uh, hold it in place so it's not going to worry about rocking from side to side uh, in the bay. Um, they're verifying at this point where the boat needs to be, where these actual the straps need to be. You'll notice uh, if you ever look on the side of vessels, you'll see a little uh, picture of a hook or a word that says sling usually, and this is indicating, of course, where the boat is best uh, to be positioned for lifting. Um, again, all the, the manufacturers are going to put this here because all these boat yards are lifting up different vessels all day long, and, and they need to make sure that they're, they're doing it in the right spot. So as the boat is getting officially lifted and ready to move forward, the captain is going to be right there leaving and going on to the next boat to bring it on into the bay already. So it'll start the whole process over again. again like I said, never ending uh, uh, trail of boats in and out throughout the day. These guys uh, work hard, uh, sun, rain, shine, uh, snow, sleet, whatever it might be. So um, really uh, neat to see the background, you know, these uh, Vessel owners bring their boats to these marinas and, and hope that they're being taken care of. And it's pretty cool uh, for, for someone like myself to, to watch these guys and, and really see that they do uh, uh, the quality work that they do and, and the care that they take on, on each and every vessel, whether it's brand new, used, old, or, or, or otherwise. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so hopefully you can hear me. But as they're finishing power washing this Prestige 550 flybridge, what's going to happen is they're going to move the travel lift forward to put it right over the top of this trailer. Now, this trailer uh, has hydraulic sides that I can show you. They'll lift up. The feel of the boat will sit right here on these blocks. Both sides, uh, there's four of them, will come up and kind of cradle the boat uh, in its place. And then they'll take this that boat on this trailer with this tractor and they're going to bring it to one of these back buildings back there. And when it sits in there, then they're going to take the blocks from here. These are big, thick wooden blocks that are nice and heavy. And they're going to support the weight of the vessel. Uh, they're going to place them in the uh, in the proper locations, really close to, uh, really on, on where all the uh, cross stringers are within the hull. So you're going to be able to knock, find the hard spots where the cross stringers are, set the boat on the blocks, and uh, put some cradles up at the back quarters and then uh, support it throughout the uh, the way. So we'll go through that process. I'll probably time lapse it because it's going to take a little while, but we'll show you as we go. So at this point, they're doing a lot of little minute movements forward and aft. Uh, they're going to be able to reposition the boat uh, with the, using the straps to lift it, uh, starboard or port side, anything that they need in order to make sure that the boat is level and the boat is properly um, balanced as well as making sure that the blocks are properly placed on top of uh, right where the stringers are, I guess underneath where the stringers are so that you're not sitting in any soft spots and the vessel is properly weighted and uh, positioned in order to be moved properly. So here we've got the hydraulic arms being uh, raised into position in order to again cradle the boat. They're going to take these straps off in here in a moment and this way the boat is going to be cradled and held properly in order to be transported across the yard into the next building. So now that the vessel is all safely uh, fixed to the trailer, they're going to remove these straps. Notice that they're careful not to let the straps, the underside that touches the boat, even touch the ground. Now that the straps have been removed, they're going to power wash the last remaining spots of algae that were covered by the straps. So those are completely removed and the bottom is fully clean. At this point, it becomes a bit of a Tetris game because all these different vessels and trailers, uh, tractors, all this are in the way of each other. So they're going to move this, uh, you know, 25 so foot uh, cabin cruiser out of the way. Now the uh, boat lift here will get out of the way, the travel lift, so that can be prepared for the next vessel while uh, this boat is going to make its trip, its journey to its uh, final resting place for the winter in one of the buildings for the uh, final storage and the blocking. All right guys, we are in the spot that this next boat is coming into. You notice boats, boats, boats everywhere. And we're going to come in, they're bringing this boat in right now. We're going to watch her back into this tight little spot and then they'll block it and they'll get it all set up and ready to roll. So here we go. What a cool opportunity this was to, to watch this whole process from start to finish. This is about a 20 minute video here guys that I dialed down at about two minutes so it was all a little more manageable for everyone. But this is absolutely incredible. The, the intricacies, these tiny maneuvers, these tiny movements that these guys are doing and the focus. You'll see the boat moving to starboard here and a little bit back to port. They're using the hydraulic arms of this trailer that we saw earlier in order to, to jockey this boat into the proper positions to get it to where it needs to be. And there's two guys on the ground and there's a guy on the trailer who's, who's in the tractor who's actually physically driving this boat into position. The, the focus, they're, they're doing this stuff all day long and the focus that they have in these moments is super cool to watch and it really does show. And we also, we visit our boats and we know the boats that are in their storage spots and safe for the winter, but we don't actually really get to see this process. So this has been pretty cool to watch and really show what they're doing and the focus that goes into it and the uh, amount of time, quite frankly. This process, again, was about 20 plus minutes. 
and that's before they even started to block the boat or, or put the jack stands up along the side to, to, to hold it in position. So right now they're lowering the swim platform in order to get this boat as far back as possible um, up to the bow of the boat that this camera is, is affixed to. So again, really neat process, really cool to watch the tiny little maneuvers that they're doing. So this year alone, these guys are storing 311 boats in their 115,000 square foot of indoor storage. So this is a process that takes time, effort, and focus on not only one boat, but all 311 boats that they're putting in here. So this has been really cool to watch. And keep in mind, this has to happen all again in the spring, just the opposite direction. They're going into the water rather than coming out of the water. So really cool to watch. I'm really thankful that these guys let us come in and watch and, and do this and kind of uh, hopefully didn't bug them too much as we did this process. If we've got questions, if things have come up and you guys have questions as we're going, please shoot them in the comments. I'd love to answer them. I'd love to get some more details from these guys for you as I can do anything for you. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Oh. Anchor. You're right. Yeah. Oh, we're not gonna get well that, but yeah, we can take the anchor off. I yeah, we won't be able to sink it. We'll get close right here. Anyway. Right, right. And carpet. Yeah. Ah. Talk about professionals. These guys know what they're doing. No this is incredible. Uh, slow process, oh, nice man. and easy, no rushing. And uh, goodness, they got that thing in there with yeah. inches to spare at most. Um, but again, look around me. Every boat in here, every little ounce of space is used and it makes it work awesome to watch the process i hope you guys are enjoying this all right so that was uh incredible to watch how narrow and tight these guys get these things in here but now starts the blocking process so all of these boats here let me get under here a little bit better so you can see all these boats are going to be blocked and supported on these big wooden blocks as i showed you earlier so this boat that just was brought in still on the trailer they're going to slowly take some of these blocks out, replace them with uh, other blocks. And so these support beams here are holding these blocks up on this trailer. Eventually they'll put some blocks next to that near there to hold it on the ground, slide out these beams and pull out this trailer. So the final product will look a lot like this where you got some blocks some shims to make sure everything is level and then you've got these support beams here just keeping the boats sturdy while we're under here this is a great example of Volvo IPS pods so again we talked about this circular disc here this whole drive system will rotate as needed but these are forward-facing so the front of the boat is that way forward-facing props on the drive so they're actually pulling the boat through the water rather than pushing the boat through the water so fuel efficiency and economical um, drive set setup here this is a phenomenal option now the other pod system is right next to us on the boat we just brought in which is cummins zeus pods if you notice here there's supposed to be a skeg here in this boat uh, had an issue over the summer which this will be repaired over the winter here while it's in storage but now you see rear facing props on the fully rotating drives. So come and Zeus pod set up there, Volvo IPS drive pod set up here. So you get to see the underbellies of these boats side by side, pretty neat.
once they get all these boats packed in here super tight like this, this is indoor heated storage. So these boats won't need uh, the air conditioning units and, uh, and any of that stuff. Um, uh, have a glycol uh, mixture run through there like an antifreeze like they would if you were storing your boat outside. Um, but while these boats are indoor heated, they don't need to do that, but they will still do uh, remove the batteries uh, or unhook the batteries so the batteries aren't going to have a drain on them and uh, then you find yourself with dead batteries in the spring. Additionally, they're going to clean and drain the bilge, uh, make sure there's any water or anything else because it's wiped out and, uh, and, and sucked out with a, with a shop vac. And also the hot water tank will also be uh, cleaned and drained. So uh, this way, no sitting water, no worries about any of that uh, while she then sits and your boat will be nice and tucked in for storage like these guys are all winter long. Now we will have a video, I'm going to do a couple videos throughout the uh, winter while these boats are in storage and some uh, maintenance items and issues or things that you could uh, work on throughout the winter. However, one thing that I'll tell you, if you look back here, obviously there's rows and rows of boats, right? So um, when planning for either A, bringing your boat back to storage or B, getting your boat out and ready for spring, you got to think about a little bit when is the boat going to be put into the building or when do I want my boat out in the spring? For example, if you're in the, again, speaking to the Midwest and the Great Lakes, right? Uh, our harbor is open around April 15th. Who knows, it could be snowing at that point, there could still be ice in the lake, but if people want their boats out earlier in the season, you gotta anticipate or plan for your boat going in last. In other words, if you're one of the closest to those doors, because otherwise, if you want your boat out in April and your boat's way back there, that's not gonna happen. So, um, there's a, you saw the process of these boats coming in, it takes some time to, to get in put in. So think about planning in advance. Okay, I'm, I know I'm gonna be wanting boating in mid-May, so perhaps you bring your boat in towards the end of the season, which is end of October, or if you do bring your boat in earlier, and then just understand it's gonna sit in the water for a little bit at one of the slips in the harbor, safe, everything else, but it'll sit here and wait until it's time for these boats to get pulled out and properly stacked in these buildings. So little things to think about. Other things to think about, if you're bringing your boat to storage and you know you're gonna want some maintenance done, have you typically are having your checklist in your mind of items that need to be done throughout this season. So come winter, fall, when you bring the boat in for storage, think about, okay, here's my list of items I'd like to get done. Don't wait until early spring and say, these are the things that I just thought about that I want done because spring is when all these boats are getting prepped for summer, getting put in the water, getting launched. The process takes a long time. Plan in advance. I try to tell my clients when we're doing, when I'm helping their uh, maintenance in, in advance for their uh, planning of next season, I give the marinas a list of stuff to get done or I'd like to get done. Um, you can get quotes on it because it takes some time to get some quotes. Sometimes nowadays it's going to take some time to get parts. Plan in advance, get this stuff pre-scheduled and ordered out or whatever in advance so then the project's being done in February and the project's done by early May and you're ready to rock and roll for the season. Some little tips and pointers that they've, uh, they've thought about and uh, maybe if you don't, now you might. All right, guys, as you can see, this process goes on all day long, all fall long. There's going to be a ton of boats coming in and out. They're getting towards the end. As we can see, the buildings are starting to get packed up. But uh, anyways, I want to say a really special thank you to Springbrook Marina, to Kevin, to all the guys here, all the service guys that have been letting me kind of be the bug in their ear, asking them some questions and just watching the process go along here. So I hope you guys got some good quality uh, background, a little bit more details on some of the processes that happen and uh, uh, things to be aware of or think about throughout the, the winter storage process. If you guys have further questions or anything else that I can do or Springbrook Marina can do for you, let me know. Shoot me a message in the comments. Uh, anything else for ideas, for suggestions for next videos, please keep them coming. You guys are doing great. I got some new ideas for the future for new videos coming uh, this winter while these boats are in storage. Uh, some detailing work, some buffs and waxes, some other projects. So keep stay tuned. Stay tuned to the channel. Uh, if you like this, give me a like, give me a follow, all that crazy jazz. I just appreciate you guys being here. Thank you again. Cheers.